Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Rebecca. But if you're already subscribed, welcome back. As you can see from the title below, today I'll be talking about the cost of medical school, particularly in Malaysia. This includes tuition fees, books, transportation, living costs, and also food. The total cost for studying medicine can be a little bit overwhelming and shocking for you guys because it's a lot. But don't worry, I will be talking about some different funding options that can help you fund your medical school fees and also some tips on how to save money as a student. I hope that you won't leave this video feeling discouraged because of all the heavy costs. Instead, I want you guys to know that if you really want to do medicine and if studying medicine is really meant for you, everything will work out fine. Without any further ado, let's get started. In Malaysia, we have several universities that offer medical course. The tuition fees for studying medicine differs from one university to another. So for International Medical University, it costs 494900 For Monash University, it costs 509850 Newcastle University, it costs 475000 Ames University, it costs 379150 For Manipal University, it costs 348500 The tuition fees for studying medicine medicine itself is already very very expensive. In fact, it's one of the most expensive degree in the country. Don't worry because normally you don't have to pay in a lump sum. For International Medical University, we pay twice per year. Something that I want you to take note of is that tuition fees for medical school increases every year, so it gets more and more expensive. I'm sure after you hear about the tuition fee, you'll be thinking like, how am I going to pay everything because it's just so expensive. So right now, I'll be talking about the different funding options that can help you fund your medical school. The first funding option would be obviously your parents. So if your parents are more than capable enough to fund your studies fully, you're welcome to do so. That's the best way actually because you're not bonded to any organization and you can basically do whatever you want because it's your parents who are paying for it. However, it's not as simple as you think because I believe that you as a child have to understand and have to take a lot of things in consideration before asking your parents to fully fund your medical school fees. So you have to think like if I ask my parents to fully fund me for my medical course, will there still be enough for my younger siblings? The second option will be to take PTPTN. PTPTN loans are need based. So if your family income is higher, you will get lesser and if your family income is lower, you will get more. So for studying medicine, if your household income is less than 4000 per month, you will be able to get 50000 for each year. So so that would be 250,000 for five years. If your household income is less than 8,000, you will be able to get 37,500 ringgit. So that would be 187,500. If your household income is more than 8,000 per month, you are able to get 30,000 per year. So that would be about 150,000 for five years. And the good thing of taking PTPTN loan is that you will have about 20 years to pay off your debt after graduating. In Malaysia, we have several scholarship bodies that offer scholarships for medical students but you have to know that the competition is very very high and they have very strict criteria. One of the most famous scholarship body would be JPA. One thing that I noticed for JPA's criteria that remain unchanged for several years is that you will have to achieve straight A's or straight A plus for your SPM results. The JPA, they will start sponsoring you after you finish your SPM. So from your pre-medical school up until you finish medical school. However, there will be a bond and this will be depending on how many years did you study for. Next will be the Yayasan Hazana Scholarship. So this is also one of the most famous and the most difficult scholarship to get. YK always look for students who possess good leadership skills and also good academic results. In order to get this YK scholarship, you have to go through four stages. The first and second one would be quizzes and then the third one would be like a camp, I think. And the fourth one will be interview. Another thing that is very good for YK scholars is that their monthly allowance is crazy. It's as if you are already working. 
So you can imagine, it's amazing, it's crazy. The third scholarship will be BTAR scholarship. They would want to sponsor students who are more in need. I'm not really sure how much they sponsor you because like I said, it changes almost every year. So you can also check that out. And the last scholarship option will be from your university. IMU sponsor only one medical student per intake if I'm not mistaken. I know they are damn kiam siap. One of the criteria for you to be eligible to apply for this IMU scholarship is that you will have to get 3.98 or 4.0 GPA for your pre-medical studies and then you will have to compete with a bunch of people because they're only giving one student out of 200 students per intake this scholarship so good luck if you want to fight for it <laughs> you can also resort to bank loans some of them would be Maybank, OCBC, Hong Leong, CIMB the interest rate for each bank differs from one another you will have to compare from banks to banks if you want to take up bank loans so yeah that's another option that you have after listening to all the options that you have you must be feeling like yes it's not as bad as it seems next i'll be talking about costs other than the tuition fees this will include things like your living costs your food transportation books and utilities so everything that i'll be talking about after this will be based on kuala lumpur standard because i'm living in kuala lumpur and most of the universities are located in Kuala Lumpur. First off, I'll be talking about the living cost. The average rental fee per month for one whole house that consists of three bedrooms and two bathrooms will be about 2,000 ringgit. Some students will also opt for room rental. You can get a room for 600 to 800 ringgit. So for food, it also really depends whether you cook by yourself or you eat out. If you're cooking yourself, I would say the average for groceries each week would be about 50 ringgit. So that will be about 200 ringgit per month. But it also really depends on the quantity that you eat and what type of food do you eat. So if you're like a small eater or you eat simple meals, 200 100 ringgit will be enough for you but if you eat like only organic food or you want more beef or seafood instead of chicken that will be more than 200 ringgit most of the students that i know do not cook by themselves because they either can't find the time to cook or they don't know how to cook or they are just too lazy to cook so they resort to eating out eating out i would give an average of Five ringgit per meal it will cost around 450 ringgit per month let's say if you want to go to a fancy restaurant or cafes for all three meals i'm sorry 450 per month is not gonna be enough as a student you can either drive your own car or you can take the public transport since i'm driving a car i can only tell you guys the estimated cost for transportation because i don't know about the public transportation so i would spend about 60 ringgit per month on petrol itself if you want to save on transportation maybe you can find a place to stay nearby the university that you're going to so the next thing that i'll be talking about is utilities for me i'm staying with my friend the water bill will be about 18 ringgit per month per person electrical bill will be about 40 ringgit per person Wi-Fi will be 50 ringgit per person the last thing that i feel that is very 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 important for medical student is your books it can range from 50 ringgit up to 450 ringgit per book sometimes more you would have to choose only the important books that you want to buy see whether you can get them second hand if you're new to medical school and you want some medical books recommendation you can check the link up over here so we have come to the last segment of the video so this is about the tips on how to save money as a student so the first tip would be to cook by yourself so this is something that i've been practicing ever since i moved to kl for the first time to study honestly it helped me save so so much money that is why i am able to travel so other than being able to save money cooking by yourself is a much more healthier option because you can see what you're putting into your food if you find that you don't have the time to cook every single day i would suggest you to do meal preps so normally i will cook once on a sunday and i will usually spend about
about one to two hours and that's it for the whole week like i don't even have to think of what am i going to eat if i'm hungry or where am i going to get my food everything is settled the second tip will be make a budget you will know where your money is going and also how much you can spend let's say if you already have a budget of 200 ringgit for your groceries you won't be able to spend more if you have already reached that budget to me making a budget is really important because you will be able to set aside some amount of money for your necessary things so you won't be lacking of anything so for the third tip you have to decide whether it's a need or a one some of the things that are under the need category would be like a need to buy food because if you don't eat you're gonna get hungry a need to buy books because if you don't have enough reference book and you can't find them in the library you're not gonna get enough information you need to buy your medical gadgets like your stethoscope your tendon hammer because without those things you are not able to practice a one is something that you already have but you want more or something that you want but you don't really need it to survive you already have a phone and you saw apple released a new iphone and then you want that phone so that's not necessary before making a decision to buy anything make sure to always think whether it's a need or a want by having this principle in your life it's gonna help you save a lot of money the fourth tip is to find opportunities to either save or earn some money as a medical student it will be hard for you to even work part-time out of school because your schedule is already very packed you can find some opportunity to help you earn some money without working part-time you can either help your university during their open day so they usually pay their students about 30 ringgit for full day also you can help out at the library you can also apply for certain working hours at the library and they will pay you by hours that would be really good as well you can also use your talent to earn some pocket money so let's say you're really good with makeup you can pick up for your friends during any university events and usually there are tons of university events you can charge them so that would be a way for you to also earn some money another way to save some money is to use some applications that offer you discounts if you use shop back to shop they will be giving you a six percent cashback seven percent cashback even though it's not a lot it will get accumulated over time and you will see that you are saving some money yeah we have come to the end of the video i really hope that you guys found this useful and Hopefully, this video prepared you in some way for your medical journey. If you have stayed to this part, thank you so much for watching my video. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!